Hi, my name is Brenda Davis, registered dietitian and co-author with Vasanto Molina of Becoming Vegan Comprehensive Edition and Becoming Vegan Express Edition. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about omega-3 fatty acids. One of the questions that we often get from people is, well, don't we need to eat fish to get EPA and DHA? And the quick answer really is just no, we don't need to eat fish to get EPA and DHA. There are actually two essential fatty acids. One is linoleic acid and the other is alpha-linolenic acid. And alpha-linolenic acid is an omega-3 fatty acid. And our bodies, when we eat a healthy diet, have the capacity to turn alpha-linolenic acid, the plant omega-3, into what we call the fish fats, EPA and DHA. And what's even more surprising is fish don't make EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA are actually made by microalgae in the ocean and the fish at some point along the food chain get the DHA and EPA from the microalgae. So it is very possible for people eating a completely plant-based diet to get plenty of omega-3 fatty acids in their diet. So let's talk about where, what foods you can rely on to get these essential fats. Where do they come from? Well, first of all, I want to say that the most concentrated sources of both omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids, the two essential fatty acids, linoleic and alpha-linolenic acid, are seeds. And so things like flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, are very rich in omega-3 fatty acids. And the very richest are the flax and the chia seeds. Both of them, over 55% of the fat, is omega-3. Hemp seed is kind of almost the opposite of, uh, of chia seed. Chia seed would be probably about 3 to 1 omega-3 to omega-6, whereas hemp seed is about 3 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3. If you combine the two and you eat the two together, you'll get a really nice ratio of both essential fatty acids. Now, uh, the, uh, the other food that provides a reasonable source of omega-3s is actually walnuts, especially English walnuts. And one of the things that I like to do to improve the nutrient absorption and the nutrient profile of walnuts is when I buy a bag of walnuts, I soak and dehydrate them, which reduces some of the compounds that inhibit our absorption of nutrients. So it makes everything more available. And so how much do you need of these nuts and seeds? Well, you would need about a quarter of a cup of walnuts to meet your needs for omega-3 fatty acids for the day. Uh, if you had about two tablespoons of ground flax seeds, that would give you about three grams of omega-3 fatty acids. Now you need probably for most people, if you aim for somewhere three to five grams a day, that would be perfect. So women with smaller uh, needs would, would, three grams would be reasonable and men who have larger caloric needs may need a little bit more. But two tablespoons of ground flax. Now the one thing I want to mention is whole flax seeds of course have a lot of omega-3s but they tend to go right through the gastrointestinal system. They're very slippery and we tend not to break them down very well. So it's hard to rely on the whole seeds for your omega-3s. However, they are one of the most amazing foods for helping prevent constipation. They're really, really good for increasing the bulk of your stools. But if you want to get omega-3s from flax, it's best to eat them ground. And then when we look at chia seeds, it, chia seeds, you would get about four grams from two tablespoons of chia seeds. And these are actually sprouted chia seeds. So that's one step better because you actually increase the essential fatty acids when you sprout a seed. Uh, hemp seeds, you would need about a quarter of a cup to give you your three or four grams a day. You'd get about 3.4 grams in a quarter of a cup of hemp seeds. Now, 
I absolutely love hemp seeds. If you're purchasing a milk like almond milk or you're purchasing a, another um, a hemp seed milk or coconut milk or any of the non-dairy beverages apart from soy, they tend to be very low in protein. Hemp is an incredible source of protein and other nutrients and what I do is I blend about um, three quarters of a cup to a cup of hemp seeds into two liters or two quarts of almond milk or coconut milk and that will bring the protein up to six or seven grams per cup but it will also boost nutrients like iron and zinc and boost the omega-3 fatty acid content of that milk as well. So that's a really good tip to know. And then the other foods that are actually very high in omega-3s are leafy greens. I shouldn't say they're high in omega-3s. When you look at the fat, they're very, very low in fat, but the most of the fat in greens is omega-3. The problem is, is that they're so low in fat that you would have to eat quite a volume of them. And uh, when you look at how people eating raw food diets, for example, eat, and a lot of vegans, they actually do eat a volume of greens, so they can make some contribution to your overall intake. And even adding them to smoothies, where you really break down the plant cell walls or using them in juices, you'll get some of those nutrients, which is really quite wonderful. Uh, now, I want to mention also, you can get uh, omega-3s from oils and, and for example flaxseed oil it just takes a teaspoon of flaxseed oil to give you over two grams of omega-3 so it's not a lot to meet your daily requirements there are this is a garlic chili flax oil which is kind of lovely uh, for a lot of food preparation now flax oil is something that you would never want to cook with because these high omega-3 rich oils have a very low smoke point because omega-3s are very unstable fats so they're not fats that you would ever cook with hemp seed oil flax seed oil those are fats you would use only in a salad dressing or in something cold now uh, these are wonderful flavors this one is a very interesting antioxidant omega blend and it has a two to one ratio of three to six or a one to two of six to three so it's very high in omega-3s but what's really interesting is the main oil in here is uh, hemp seed oil then flaxseed oil so it's a really nice combination but if you continue to read the list of ingredients you see blueberry seed oil black raspberry seed oil black cumin seed oil pomegranate seed oil and cranberry seed oil and these oils are extremely rich in antioxidants so a, a very very nice choice as well now the other thing to know is, is that for some people, you need to be able to convert the plant fat in you know, walnuts and chia seeds and flax seeds and hemp seeds and greens into EPA and DHA. And for many people that conversion, for most people that conversion is slow, but for some people, the conversion to DHA is extremely slow. So for example, women of childbearing age tend to be fairly good at converting because their bodies need to convert. DHA is critical. It's 40% it's of, of the gray matter of the brain. Uh, the fat there is DHA. So this is a really important uh, fatty acid in the body. And so for some people that aren't converting, people who have hypertension or diabetes or who have uh, not such a healthy diet, they lack B vitamins and zinc and don't get enough protein, don't get enough nutrients, their conversion ability will be compromised. People who are from cultures where fish was a really predominant food, they may have less of the enzyme that is responsible for converting this plant omega-3 into these more biochemically active long chain omega-3s like EPA and DHA. So there's good news for those people and that is that uh, there are a number of companies that actually grow this DHA and EPA rich microalgae and turn it into uh, vegan or vegetarian supplements and so we can get 
this EPA and DHA directly from supplements if, if we need to. And there are some cases where this is a good idea, as I mentioned, for people with diabetes or hypertension, or even for women of childbearing age who want to boost their status, because generally people who are vegetarian or vegans have lower uh, DHA and EPA status. It's about half that of the general population. So if you want to just boost it, this is a very, very effective way of doing that fairly rapidly. So, so uh, what do we need if we're taking DHA and EPA? You would want somewhere between two and 300 milligrams of DHA, EPA, or a combination of those uh, daily if you're trying to boost your level. That would be very reasonable. Now, I want to say that in Becoming Vegan Comprehensive Edition and Becoming Vegan Express Edition, we have an entire chapter on fats, and a huge section of that chapter, of those chapters, are on essential fatty acids, so we go into much more detail uh, on that. So please do um, pick up a copy, and thank you so much for listening.